We gathered from across the globe to share our stories and discuss how, through actions in kitchens, classrooms and communities, chefs can contribute to the United Nations Global Goals. Together we stand for ingredients grown with respect for the earth and its oceans, protection of biodiversity and improved animal welfare, investment in sustainable agriculture and farmer livelihoods, no food loss or waste, celebration of local seasonal food, a focus on plant-based ingredients, education on food safety, healthy diets and nutritious cooking, and nutritious food that is accessible and affordable for all. We the chefs, we the chefs, are working together to create a better food future. Hi everyone, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Bukhari Itzweng. I'm a chef based in Johannesburg, South Africa. Today I'm going to show you a traditional dish that we eat here in Southern Africa called Dingi Amabele. Amabele uh, is sorghum. Um, sorghum is an ancient African grain indigenous obviously to Africa. The reason why I'm doing ding is because it's one of those um, forgotten ingredients or forgotten foods that we all grew up eating and our grandmothers used to make in their kitchens but now has kind of like disappeared from our dishes and it has disappeared actually from our kitchens. Um, so I'm bringing it back and feeding it into the cities because a lot of city dwellers have actually stopped eating these traditional foods and rather eat um, our fast foods and easy, quick and easy meals. Ding is one of those dishes that takes a long time to cook, but um, it's also, you know, the, the traditional way of doing it, which is fermenting it, takes a while. So it takes three, four days of fermentation and then you can only eat it. I love ding because it's perfect for um, for me. I love, I love the sour of it. I eat it for breakfast and I also eat it savory. Strangely enough, um, when I went, uh, when I lived in New York, I, you know, got into contact with Ethiopian food. And when I first tasted injera, I thought, hmm, this tastes very much like ding. Even the setting, the way it was eaten, it was eaten as a savory with spicy dishes. So I fell in love with injera purely because, um, because it tasted, it reminded me of home and it tasted like ding. Again, ding is one of those indigenous grains, like I said, um, that um, have been forgotten. And it's one of those indigenous grains that are making a comeback in, in our cities and in, in Africa purely because it's drought resistant and it's good for the planet. So, my recipe today basically brings back this dish. So, it's ding in a savory form, but I'm going to turn it into something that could be street food or could be eaten by even young, the younger generation who really aren't aware and aren't um, used to eating ding. So today, what I'm gonna show you is ingredients that have been forgotten. So for instance, this green, this is morojo, it's Zimbabwean kale or chumulea. It's called chumulea in, um, you know, in Zimbabwe. Um, but it's just, it's hearty like kale, it tastes like kale. It's delicious and it's eaten with meat stews and it's eaten also with either sadza or bap or ding um, as, 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 a, as an accompaniment. So what I've done is that instead of, eat, instead of preparing this um, kale the original way or the easiest way which is frying it in onion with oil um, and some spices, I've actually fermented it and pickled it Again, making it easy to survive in the city. For people who don't um, grow their own vegetables, they can still have healthy, good, indigenous um, ingredients in, the, in their cupboards that, you know, that can just sit in the cupboard without even being in the fridge. So I fermented and pickled this kale or chumulia um, to make it easy and accessible um, to the city dweller. Another product that I absolutely love. So the thing that I get a lot um, is people saying, where do you get the sorghum grain? How do I access the sorghum grain? I love sorghum. I can make tabule with it, but where do I access it? 
So I met up with this young lady. Um, she runs a business called Local Village Foods. So Local Village Foods, they basically are a link between rural farmers and the city. So they bring awesome ingredients, awesome African ingredients. So they've got sorghum, they've got teff grain, um, all nicely well packaged and available in the city. So I love, I love their products because again, they bridge the gap between the rural areas and the city. Again, helping to feed the city with um, nutritional and um, wholesome grains and food that are traditionally um, have been eating in South Africa but are out of circulation in the cities. So today's dish, I'm gonna show you how to make this steam. So initially, you want to ferment the ding. So you, you, you grind it, like I'm gonna show you here. You've got some ding in the blender and you just... You grind it and... As you can see, it's not finely ground, as you can see. And what you then do is that you put it in a jar, like I've done here, um, add some warm water, and just leave it for three, four days to ferment. So this is my dean that's fermenting in warm water. It's gonna take two or three days to ferment, depending on the weather. If it's hot outside, it takes shorter, a shorter time, but if it's cold, it takes longer. So here's my dean that I did earlier. I'm just gonna leave it there to ferment. And this one, I'm actually gonna use this to roll my little balls into. So, first thing is, obviously use my fermented ding and I cook it. The natural way or the normal traditional way to cook it is just boil it until it gets soft. Boil it like you would porridge until it gets soft. So what I've done is that I've boiled some earlier and I've just let it to, um, le left it to cool and so I'm, I'll be able to make these um, ding balls that I'm making now. So my recipe is ding balls that are stuffed with um, the pickled morojo or pickled chumulia. So what you need to do then is, obviously this is dry, you, you want it to be cold. So you take your, your ding, I'm gonna get a little bit of water on my, on my hands just so that it doesn't stick. And then you just take your ding and you just flatten it. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna stuff it with the morojo. So the whole idea is the same way you would do arancini, it's the same way you do this recipe. And then we'll just take our morojo and just plunk it in the middle. So you can stuff your ding balls with anything. You can stuff them with, with meat, because traditionally um, ding is eaten with meat or with spicy dishes. I mean, this, this fermented or pickled kale is is quite spicy so very much um, the palate of the city very much traditional but also appeals to a city dweller so this is a kind of dish that you could find at a market at a food market at a street food market in johannesburg there's a lot of street food markets um, that are opening people up to all sorts of delicious um, ingredients and all sorts of delicious um, dishes so this is something that you could have at a market. It works perfectly well in a market setting. Traditional, but in a market setting. So I'm just gonna, once I've rolled, like you see, I've done that. I've covered um, the pickle that's inside. I've, put, I've just rolled it up. And then I just roll it inside the ground tin. The reason for doing that is you want it to have a crunch. You want it when you bite into it. So when you, first of all, when you um, put it in the oven, it's gonna, um, it's gonna harden outside because of this crunch. But when you bite into it, it's got this crunch and it's got the, the smooth ding inside and then the spicy pickle in the middle. So it's just awesome, awesome flavors and awesome textures. Again, making it interesting and making it relevant in the city context. So I'll just, Make a couple of balls, a couple of more balls. So you just flatten with the back of a spoon. It's literally very simple to do. So this, 
originally or traditionally you would eat it like this you would just take the tea and the pap and the meat and that's it so it's tea the morocco and the meat and that's it but this time we're playing around with the with the same flavors the same ingredients just presenting them in a different way that's very seedy um accessible so here we go we're rolling another ball just make sure that you close um, the ball inside so you don't have the filling seeping out when you are cooking it so here we go ball roll it in and then we're just gonna make a whole lot and then we're gonna bake them in the oven look you could fry them you could deep fry them if you like um, city dwellers love deep fried anything <laughs> but I like to to bake my food because I just don't like all that oil in the food so I just like to keep it as traditional as possible and remember that traditionally Africans we don't eat deep fried anything um, it's only later on in our lives later on when we move from the rural areas to the city areas that even our um, you know our eating habits changed I mean I love a good fried anything but that's not a traditional way of eating it so again we're all about building communities we're all about feeding people healthy um, healthy food and just trying to keep the authenticity of the ingredients um, and the dish so I'm gonna bake mine but you could deep fry them if you want so as you can see I'm struggling a bit with closing it but it's closed now and then I just roll it in so you can do as many as you like um, we're just gonna do I'll do one more so I've got four balls so the nice thing about the ding is because it's fermented it's got that sour so it's like a sour when you pair it with a spicy anything it works perfectly well it's like really 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 delicious so i'm just gonna close it in it really honestly reminds me of injera it's got the same kind of flavor the same kind of taste and i think probably it's cooked the same way because i know with injera they use teff which is this um this grain here that i've got also from um local village um foods so it's the kind a similar kind of grain and i know that they grind the grain and then they um, ferment it over seven days same kind of way with warm water the same way you would ferment thing so for me that just shows me that africans we are the same we are the same people our food is the same uh, our tastes are the same so this would work on in any context you know um so here we go and Joburg being a multicultural city with a lot of people from all over the world all over Africa this um, this steam ball will really work for anyone here in the city okay so I've got my balls and then what I'm gonna do is I don't want to put any oil or anything there I'm just gonna pop them in the oven and grill them for the next 10 to 15 minutes until they are hardened outside I think it's been 10 minutes, so let's check on them. Oh, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So while I was waiting for the sorghum, I made a simple salad of grated carrots, the chopped uh, chumulia that we had here, this chumulia, morojo, uh, chopped it, um, a little dressing made with ginger, lemon juice, olive oil, and some seasoning, salt, pepper, perfect, easy. So, just gonna put our, our salad on there. Here we go. Because we want, we also want nutrient dense foods in our lives. And I think the salad just adds like such a brightness and such an easy it just says light easy eat me it's beautiful this one. 
some of those carrots on top. Yeah, awesome. And then we'll just finish them off with just some herbs. But before herbs, there's a little bit of chili sauce on there, just a little, not a lot. Um, because as Africans, we love our chili sauce, we love our spice. So just put, just tear some um, some herbs over there. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. Um, small fork in there. And there we go. Perfect for a street food market. Perfect for just easy eating at home. Yeah, easy, light, perfect for the city dweller. There we go. Mmm. 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 So delicious. Wow.